Hello my Eurovision friends, welcome back to the ESC Scott YouTube channel. I'm Dean and I am back, finally back from Malmö and oh my god, it was such a crazy week, such an experience. I'm going to actually do a vlog, a little video talking about my experience in Malmö. I'll kind of walk you through what happened uh, and the experience as being press. It was really, really fun, but I haven't done any videos talking about the results, uh, who won our semi-finals, who actually won Eurovision. Uh, I've not done a video analysing the results and analysing the semi-finals and reviewing what happened, but that's what I'm doing now, ready to talk about semi-final one. We're going to see who were the big heavy hitters, who won this semi-final, we're going to have a look at who didn't qualify, why didn't they qualify and what changes could they make for next year to hopefully get them qualifying again. So without further ado, let's play the intro. Before I start talking about this semi-final, remember to give this video a big, 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 big thumbs up. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel already, please, please, please do so. It helps us out so much. We're just about to hit 2,000 subscribers. So if you haven't done it already, just click that little subscribe button. It's, it's free. And if you love Eurovision, you might as well do it. Okay, semi-final one. Uh, what a show. What a show. We had 15 very different songs, quite diverse this semi-final and some really heavy hitters. Two of the top three came out of this semi-final. But before we get on to non-qualifications and who qualified, I just want to talk about our interval acts that we got from this semi-final as well. I mean, what an opening act we had in the semi-final with Chanel and Eleni Pereira and Eric Saada. Seriously? I think they should have saved this opening for the final. I feel that this would, be, would have been an amazing kind of way to show are um, finalists that even if you don't win, uh, if you come second, third or even last, you, you can still make waves within um, your own country and kind of be quite successful. Chanel had a huge hit with Slow Mo, charted all over Europe and has done well since her participation. Eleni Ferreira has just been an absolute icon in the world of Eurovision. I'm sure she's actually going to come back. I'm th I think that's going to happen soon. And then Eric Sade, he's just incredible. He's been doing so much stuff in Sweden. He's done Melody Festival and countless of times he's a Eurovision icon as well. Having this interval act in the final I feel would have kind of shown, even in the semi-finals it doesn't really matter where it was, but I feel like they should have saved this for the final. Because in all honesty I think this was possibly the best interval act of the whole entire show this year within the semi-finals and the final. I feel like this was kind of our best interval act. It wasn't even an interval act, it was actually open the opening act but it was perfect. I mean what a way to start the show. And then our hosts Petra and Morlin, I mean icons. Petra is just up there with some of the most iconic hosts in the world of Eurovision. We know that. She is incredible. Her jokes are just spot on every single time. We never miss. She's just an absolute queen of Eurovision. She knows how to host. She's the perfect person to do it. Mollen was actually kind of quite a surprise. When she was doing the dress rehearsals, she seemed a little bit kind of, I don't know what the word was, she just didn't deliver the jokes very well. It was, it's kind of seemed quite awkward at, at times but actually on the live shows she did deliver. I think she needed an audience and once she got one it, kind of, it flowed a little bit better with her and Petra and um, it worked and both of them from the moment I saw them in the semi-finals it was good, it was going to work. And yeah, Ed Edward, if you don't know who he is, he's the script writer. He, I think he, um, he also, had, there was other people in the team that worked on the script as well, but I've, I don't know who the others were, but I know that Edward is kind of the person that worked closely with both Petra and Mollen, and they came up with a lot of the jokes and a lot of the um, comedy this year, and they done it perfectly, it was spot on this year. I mean, that grinder joke on semi-final one was actually hilarious, like I could not stop laughing in the arena, like people were kind of embarrassed <laughs> because I was just laughing. They were laughing too, but I was full on laughing. Um, and also, Benjamin and Grosso, that interval act was amazing as well. I didn't realise how much I liked Benjamin and Grosso, mu uh, his music, until I saw this interval act. It's actually really good. It's quite good. Yeah, it kind of felt like a, almost like kind of a Super Bowl performance. It kind of was a, 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 an amalgamation of all his hits. And then, um, yeah, it was really, really quite, um, it was pu uh, pulled off quite well. And then we also had Johnny Logan performing Euphoria uh, as part of the interval act for semi-final one as well. I did hear a rumour that um, Loreen was actually meant to be on stage with him performing the song. But she pulled out, um, literally I think only a few weeks before. Don't know why, but I heard that, I don't know if it's true or not, that's just something I heard. But it would have been nice to see 
Lorene on stage with him, but it was a really amazing performance by John Logan. He ca he still has it. He can sing. But yeah, let's now talk about our performances and our um, results. I'm not going to talk about the performances in full. I'm going to do a separate video for that. And this video is more about analysing the results and the reviewing who uh, d uh, didn't qualify and who made it and who made it by that much. And we've also got some surprises. We want to talk about the surprises that we had in this semi-final. So first up, let's talk about who didn't make it. Who sadly did not make it to the final from semi-final one. So 15 acts competed, five didn't make it, and sadly our last place, not only of this semi-final, but of the entire year, was Iceland. Here at Bjork with the song Scared of Heights. I mean, this was kind of, I mean, this was not obvious. I feel like this actually could have made it for some reason. I don't know why in my, in my head, I had a feeling this might make it. I don't know why. Obviously now, looking back, I shouldn't have. Um, yeah, this just, this wasn't, this obviously did not connect with anyone. I mean, it connected with a few people, obviously. Yeah, so the song connected to a few people in um, Sweden and uh, some in Cyprus, because they only got points from Sweden and Cyprus, only three points, which is, yeah, it's heartbreaking. I mean, Hera is one of the loveliest people I think that I've spoken to from this year. She is just a ray of sunshine. I think i done an interview with her, um, online interview, a Zoom interview, and she kind of made it, it, it was quite clear to me that she knew it was going to be hard for her to get through. So she was trying to make the most out of the situation. This is probably going to be her last time at Eurovision. So she was trying to make the most out of it and kind of just enjoy the experience and not take it for granted. And, and that's what she'd done. The performance was actually okay. They executed it well. The camera shots were amazing. The angles were really good. We had kind of lasers going on in the arena. It was fun. It just lacked energy. There was a lack of appreciation in the audience and no one really was paying attention to this one. And also this followed Croatia. So it's going to be hard for her to kind of compete with Baby Lasagna in this one. It just was, yeah, it was dead in the water. And I do feel bad for Kira because she is such a, an amazing person. It's such a ray of sunshine. But yeah, did Iceland deserve this? I feel like they did, yes. So that, that's the main question. Did they deserve this non qualification? Yeah, I think this may be a wake up call to the Icelandic broadcaster. Change things up in this national final. It's not going well. That's two non qualifications in a row. The first one in 2023 with Delia, that was I think really bad luck. I mean, I th I don't, I, she didn't have a great uh, spot in the running order either. Staging wasn't great with Delia and neither the staging wasn't really good with Hera Bjork. I, I think there has to be some sort of switch up in the national final or with the team staging the songs. And then also we do need to get some better songs in the national final. I think the songs in Song for Kepnan last year were just, none of that. I feel like if any of them were chosen, even Bashar Murad's song would have struggled to qualify. This is the truth people, it's an unpopular opinion. I feel like no matter what they had chosen in that final of Song for Kepnan, it would have struggled to make it through this tough semi-final. So yeah, Iceland really, really do truly need to change something up because it's, it's what they're doing is not working. Okay, next up in 14th was Azerbaijan. They got 11 points, 14th place. Fari and Ilkin with the song Unzula Apar. I mean, I was never a huge fan of this song, but for some reason, yet again, like Iceland, there was a weird, there was something in my mind saying, this can make it, this maybe can, this could shock us, it could make it. Latvia got from semi-final one, why couldn't Azerbaijan? You, 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 you see what I mean? It got points from um, all over the board, it got one point from Ukraine, one point from Serbia, one point from Poland, Lithuania, uh, Finland, and Moldova gave this six points. I mean, not surprising, but yeah, obviously not enough to make it. Azerbaijan, I don't know what's going on with Azerbaijan at the moment. I mean, Azerbaijan at one point was considered an absolute powerhouse at Eurovision. They were going to win again. I was, I, I said to myself in 2021, I'm sure in the next five years, Azerbaijan is going to win again. We are going to be going to Baku at some point soon. And it, it, it's getting less and less likely every single year. Last year with the twins, what were their names? Oh my God, what were their names? Turan Turan. That song was just not it and I feel like this year was just kind of a similar situation. The song was just, it, it was the massive problem. The staging for these both of these songs were great. Azerbaijan knows how to stage, that's not a problem. The songs, however, were not good. Like they just, they weren't strong enough and that's quite clear. However, I'm so glad that Azerbaijan had the balls to send something in Azerbaijani. They've not done that ever. So it's kind of, I'm glad that they have had um, the courage to do that because it's not obviously a language that is heard ever. I mean if someone came up to me and started speaking Azerbaijani I just wouldn't know what it was so getting that representation in Eurovision is great. I'd love to see that again but obviously I'd love 
to see a better song accompany it. Yeah, it just wasn't strong enough, sadly, to make it. What do Azerbaijan need to do to change? Go back to their old ways. They're obviously, they've changed something in the system. They've either changed the team or changed the way they're selecting the songs. I don't really know what's going on behind the scenes, but Azerbaijan need to kind of go back to what they used to do. Because they were a powerhouse. They were kind of guaranteed to qualify no matter what they were sending. Everyone had them as kind of a for sure qualifier, even before the song came out. Like, everyone kind of expected Azerbaijan's song to be good. But previously, past two years, not no, so it's it's they need to change it up again, <laughs> change it up quickly. Okay, and thirteenth was um, Moldova. Natalia Barbu in the middle. Um, I mean. <sighs> This was a hard one as well. I feel like this was, for me, I, I've spoke to Natalia, she is, she is lovely. The song actually was, personally for me, underrated by the fans. I feel like people kind of underestimated this. I thought Moldova always had this weird thing of kind of selecting an iffy song from the national final. Like it's not a song that really is strong or has any kind of wow moment in it. It doesn't really connect with many people. However, when they get to Eurovision and they get some staging and they have money thrown at it a little bit, it kind of comes to life. They've done that with Doridos in 2017. They've done it with Suarez Suarez Luna in 2023. I didn't really love that song. I didn't think it really came to life in the national final. It just, it had that kind of, it was fun, but it wasn't really kind of flashy, it wasn't poppy enough for me, I didn't think it was going to get through. But then once I saw it live and I saw the performance on the stage in Liverpool, it was amazing. And oh my god, it, it was going to qualify. It shows that staging can really elevate a song and that's what Moldova seemed to be really good at this year. That didn't happen which was, I, I was expecting it to. <laughs> My mind was default kind of thinking, oh, Moldova's gonna do this again, this kind of thing where they choose a iffy song but kind of stage it well and that's gonna be enough to get it through. It wasn't close to happening, they got 20 points overall. Points, yet yeah, again, kind of scattered all over the board. Five points from Portugal, four points from Ukraine, three points from Serbia and Cyprus, uh, Ireland, Azerbaijan, Croatia. I mean, yeah, they're just, the staging wasn't good enough. They're, they're, she was. It was too static. I feel like she should have had some dancers with her. She did explain to me, and then uh, I had an interview with her, she did explain that uh, her staging was going to be different. There was going to be no dancers. She was going to be bringing her violin. She was going to be bringing some new elements um, to the stage from the national final. It didn't work though. I feel like the stage was just so empty. It was that big that it was swallowing her up. Although vocals were on point, vocals were great. It just didn't look good, and that was the problem. It didn't connect with enough people to get it through. And that's, yeah, it's sad. Because I would have loved to have seen this song in the final. I would have loved it to be the kind of underdog of the year. Kind of like what Swarovic Swar Luna was. Um, didn't happen, unfortunately. What does Moldova need to do now? I, to be honest with you, I don't know. I actually don't know. Um, they're probably going to continue with Etapa Nationale. Selecting their act from the open auditions and um, continuing on with what they've been doing. Because it does seem to work, I feel like this is just maybe a little bit of a blip. Um, maybe next year they'll come back with a better song. I think next year we're just going to have to sit and see what happens um, with Moldova, because you never know what they're going to do. They could, they could end up sending a really beautiful ballad, you never know. They could end up sending something wacky. You never know what you're going to get with Moldova. You really don't. Next up is a heartbreaker for me. Poland, Luna with the song The Tower came 12th in the semi-final with 35 points overall. So. Yeah, nearly made it. She did get points from all over the board. She got eight from Iceland, seven from Ireland, six from the UK, Lithuania, four, Ukraine, Sweden, Germany, Slovenia. She got points from everywhere, but just, yeah, again, not enough. The problem with this performance, I feel like, was it, she was just doing too much. The vocals were just, nah. They, were, they weren't there and that was because I feel like she was probably just doing way too much on stage. She wasn't focusing enough on vocals. It was kind of like, girl, you're doing too much. Good, calm it down. This performance was staged by the same person that done um, Embers for the UK in 2021, and it kind of it showed. It showed. I was kind of surprised because I thought the staging was actually kind of decent in the rehearsal clips, um, and I was like, oh my god, the same guy that done Ember, Embers done this, and I was like, no way. But now, what? Once I saw the whole performance, I kind of like, oh right, wait a minute. Now I realise. Okay, it was a bit cheesy. It was a bit kind of just, girl, you're doing way too much. Slow it down, calm it down, this song doesn't require all this movement. It didn't require two towers, it didn't require two dancers kind of moving about constantly. It, it just required her to be vocally on point and we didn't get that. I mean, saying that, the towers were kind of cool, 
but I, I, obviously the song is called the tower they had towers on stage but what was the relevance of it like the staging didn't really mean anything um, it didn't kind of tell me anything it knew about the song or about the story of the song or about Luna it felt confusing while uh, watching it and I don't feel like a lot of people in the arena were kind of loving this by the end of the performance I mean there was claps there was cheers but it just didn't no, it didn't have enough. However, I still love the studio track of this. I adore the studio track of this. It's amazing. I listen to it quite a lot, but um, yeah, staging wasn't great. Am I surprised that it didn't make it through? No. After watching the whole performance back now, realizing I, it's, it's not a surprise this didn't make it through. The, the other performances that did make it through kind of deserved to make it through over this. They were just a little bit more polished, the vocals were a little bit more on point, but Luna could have made it through. I think if the vocals were just a little bit more polished and the staging wasn't as kind of flashy and a little bit as, as abrupt as it was, I feel like she probably would have made it through. What does Poland need to do in the future to avoid another non-qualification? <sighs> to be honest with you, don't, do not get the guy to do your staging that done Embers and the tower. Don't do that. That guy shouldn't be doing staging. It's no offence whoever it is, but you should not stage songs. Uh, no. I, I do think Poland's one of these countries that I, I, I see them winning soon. I do see them winning. I feel like Poland is one of the countries I think is going to send a fan favourite soon and possibly can win it. I mean, that um, Justina song, the Witcher Tahara song, Taro song, that was really good. So intense, very impactful. I saw the live performance of that. I feel like if Poland had chosen that, they would have easily made it. I easily made it and I feel like that song could have potentially been top 10 with great staging. So Poland just have to make the right decisions I think within the song selecting. I feel like they have to have the right song. I don't know if the tower was the right song for this year. I feel like that's where Poland need to focus on a little bit more is maybe the song and staging. I feel like um, staging can be a problem for um, Poland. But, um, the song is the, the first thing I'd be focusing on uh, for Poland uh, when trying to get a win. Even though the song was good, the studio track is really good, I don't think it was right for Eurovision this year personally. Okay, now 11th in the semi-final. <sighs> nearly made it, just nearly made it. Only six points out. Is it, my heart breaks for them and it is Australia, Electric Fields, One Mail Cali, they got 41 points and uh, only 6 points separated them from 10th uh, place. They almost made it, just a few more points from another country and they would have got through. Is it surprising now watching the live performance? No. It's not. I watched this live performance yesterday when I got home um, because my partner in crime, Keen, is, is, this was his favourite song of the year and we watched it back because we wanted to see what it looked like on TV. It's one of the songs we hadn't seen yet and oh my god. In the arena, it, it's so weird how in the arena the vocals can sound so good, can sound amazing, it can sound exactly like the studio track and then when you come home and watch it on TV you go, oh shit, I was so unbelievably wrong, this just didn't sound great this was that kind of situation. It was hitting the high notes but it just didn't sound like the studio track, it just wasn't impactful, it didn't have enough, enough oomph and it was just, it was a little bit all over the place. Although they got points from all over the board, they got points from UK, Finland, they got points from near enough every country but just not enough to make it through. Yeah this is kind of heartbreaking for Australia because I know that they, um, they have financial troubles I know that Australia are probably one of the countries that can spend the least money. They don't have a lot of money. The, the broadcaster is very limited in what they can do uh, finance-wise. I mean, they, they didn't have a music video for this song. It was literally just a lyric video. And that's what made me think possibly maybe they're saving some money for the stage show. Maybe they're kind of waiting to show off something within the staging. And we didn't get that, which was sad. But I understand finances. It's hard for Australia to kind of use the money wisely. Um, because they don't get a lot of it. They have to kind of find sponsors to fund the, the getting them to wherever Eurovision's getting hosted. And it's expensive, believe me, it's expensive, I know. I feel like they actually done quite well considering. I mean, the camera shots were good, yet again, the stage kind of felt a little bit empty. The camera shots were a wee bit all over the place, but it was good enough. I felt like the, the, the staging was actually okay. And then the guy with the didgeridoo comes out and it, it, it's really, it's nice to see a didgeridoo getting played at Eurovision. I mean, it's something I never thought we'd see at Eurovision. I don't feel like we're going to get it again. So, I mean, it's nice to see that we got that representation at Eurovision. But, I mean, it just, yeah, this it's, it's sad because I really would love to have seen this in the final. But I understand why it didn't make it. I understand. It nearly made it, which is even more heartbreaking, but I understand. Now, what could Australia do to change uh, their ways, try and get back into the final? I mean, Australia literally only have non-qualified twice. 
they are quite a strong uh, country when it comes to Eurovision. We can kind of count on them to come with a good song every year. We do count on them to do that. This was the first year where I was like, oh, wait a minute, this is kind of the first time I'm doubting them. Um, even in 2021, I knew they weren't going to qualify because of the COVID situation. They weren't there in the arena, so it was hard for them to make it. This was the first year with Electric Fields where I was like, uh, I'm, I'm really kind of worried now. I'm hoping that that doesn't happen next year. I'm hoping that Maybe they can get some more funding, some more sponsorship possibly. Try and get someone behind SBS, try and get the funds to try and uh, make a music video, make the staging better. It just, they just need a little bit more of the, I think, some more money. What I would really hate to happen is to lose Australia. I don't think it's going to happen, but obviously we have to talk about this as an analysis. We, we, I hope this doesn't happen. It ha it's, it's happened before where countries have non-qualified after qualifying for quite a long time and um, saying, well, actually, no, if you don't want us in the final, well, we, we, just, we just won't come back. Um, I hope that doesn't happen. I really, really hope that doesn't happen because Australia brings something to the contest that I feel like no other country does. Yeah, I would really, really hate to lose them. I hope they do come back. There is talks that they have renewed their, their contract as a permanent country. They, they, they are a permanent country at Eurovision. I hope that that is true. But yeah, Australia just needs to come back and come back with a, maybe a slightly better song and um, maybe even a national final. There's talks of, about the national final returning. Maybe that's a possibility. Yeah, but I, I just want Australia back. Now I've talked about all of our non-qualifications. Let's now talk about who actually did qualify. So Serbia, Slovenia, Portugal, Finland, Cyprus, Luxembourg, Lithuania, and Ireland, <laughs> Ukraine, and Croatia all made it through to the final. Serbia just making it through in 10th place with 47 points, but from the second position in the running order. So they just made it through from the second position. So we have another country that's made it through from the second position in the uh, semi-final running order. Yet again, that's proving that any country can do it as long as they have good staging and it's impactful enough. It's not the death spot. And Slovenia making it through, 51 points. Portugal making it through a lovely, lovely ballad, 58 points with a 100% televote. Very good. I was doubting Portugal getting through before the actual semi final when I was watching the dress rehearsal. I was kind of worried for it, not going to lie. It's one of my favourite songs of the year. She is amazing. I love the Grito moment at the end. I was just a little bit worried for it, but the fact that it got through. 58 points, it got, it made it safely through, thank god, but there was doubts in my mind. Finland made it through in 7th place, I thought they would be much higher, I thought with that song I thought it was going to be much higher within the televote, surprising to me that it wasn't, but it made it through. Cyprus getting through with 67 points, I mean they were getting through I think regardless, that song was just quite, it was, the, the staging was a little bit empty but I feel the song was strong enough. It was first up in the running order, I feel like people do actually remember the first uh, one in the running order more than the second. I feel like that is just standard. And I really enjoyed that performance. I'm glad it made it through. Luxembourg in fifth, which was a surprise. I thought this was the candidate to not make it. Possibly borderline, yes. But they made it through easily. 117 points. So incredible from Tally and uh, uh, Luxembourg. They will uh, be back next year. I was worried for them returning, possibly if they didn't qualify. There was jokes about it made in the show. And semi-final one about how if they don't qualify, we won't see them again until 20, 2050 or something. I thought that was really funny actually. But they will be back next year, which is exciting. That's been announced that Luxembourg is returning for 2025. So yeah, we don't have to worry about them not coming back because of a non-qualification. Thank God. Then Lithuania, um, fourth place. Yeah, absolutely incredible for um, Sylvester. Great result. They had a great result in the final as well. Lithuania are really on an upward trajectory. Another country I think is going to win it soon. Then... The saving grace for Ireland, that is Bambi Thug, didn't stay blue, 124 points in a semi-final, 100% televote. You are joking, you are, the feeling that well, I was in the arena for this semi-final and when, the, when I tell you the whole arena just kind of stood up and cheered and just went crazy for Bambi when Ireland was announced as the qualifier, I mean I just... I'm so happy for them. Like this is incredible for Ireland. I'm going to go into a little bit more depth in my grand final analysis um, later on in the week about Ireland because I'm just so happy. There's a million things I could say about Ireland and Bambi, but yeah, um, oh, I'm so happy for Ireland. This is just this is only going to go up for them. I feel so pleased for them. They got through third place in the semi-final. Then Ukraine, um, 173 points, um, coming second in the semi-final. Yeah, this was obviously going to happen. 100% qualifying record, they were going to get through. The fact that they came second, incredible. I mean, yeah, no, no, not much more I could say. Absolutely incredible. Then 
The clear winner of this was Croatia, Rimtim Tagadim, Baby Lasagna, 177 points, winning the semi-final. Yeah, incredible performance, fan favourite, knew it was going to get through obviously, I had a feeling it was going to win the semi-final, it did. Very happy for him, very happy for Croatia, this is, yeah again, only going to go up for them I feel, and yet a well worthy winner of semi-final one. There we have it. Semi-final one, we've talked about the results, is there anything else that we have to have a chat about? I don't think so, I think we've covered all bases, but there we are our results for semi-final one. Who do you think should have got through? If you had to choose a country that should have got through over the others that did, who would you have chosen? Personally, I would have put through, I think, Australia. And I probably personally, for my own opinion, I probably would have took out Slovenia and put Australia in personally. But what would you have done in that situation? Who would you have took out and who would you have put in? But yeah, let me know what you think down below in the comments about semi-final one. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more uh, reviews and analysis videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one. See you then and bye-bye.